and gardening and Benjamin Moore paint, but they also have the area's largest selection of Aret and Carhartt clothing for men and girly girl graphic tees for women. Men beat the heat this summer with the Aret Tech men's shirts. These shirts are odor resistant, moisture wicking, and provide UPF sun protection. Looking for the right work shoe or boot? Fort Dobbs has a huge selection of Red Wing, Justin, Muck Boots, and Danner in stock. Fort Dobbs Hardware and a whole lot more. 406 Turnersburg Highway in Statesville. Real Country 550 and 92.9 WAME Statesville. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest. From the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Now here's our host, David Ham. And good evening, evening, everyone. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. And uh, you're tuned in here on 5.50 a.m. and 92.9 fm as well as dham i am on youtube and as you just heard phil's voice he is not here this evening he actually got into a fight with some yellow jackets or something like that he said so he didn't make it in with us that's phil cavalli photo phil oh. and uh but we do have john callis in with me this evening and we've got tracy to my right uh but john callis how you doing john doing good good to see you again man i'm really excited to see you because it's been a couple of years probably three years last about time about we saw him years. was at the hall yeah. of fame oh yeah Okay. The Roberts, Roberts induction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that, that's that been, gosh, was that three years ago, thereabouts? Mm. Maybe four. It's somewhere now. Oh, well, yeah, three or four years. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, that's, um, so you were, you were, you retired from Robert Yates Racing back about three or four years ago. About four years ago, yeah. About that same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Things were changing and, uh, I decided I needed to, to to maybe do something different. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we did that pro stock thing, if you remember that. Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> was that the yeah. Sandy Wilkins? Yeah, well, Sandy kind of? was like the the overseer of the program, but um the biggest problem we had was getting parts and uh Ford was supposed to be involved in it. Ford was involved, but it took a long time to get the proper pieces to build the engine. Mhm. Mm so by the time we actually got an actual Ford engine together, we it was pretty much out. Yeah. Run out of money. Right. That's the way it goes sometimes in <clears throat> in the big time auto racing, right? That's <laughs> a lot of way a lot of times that goes that way. Yes, it certainly does. Uh so yeah, if y'all are tuned in, we got John Callis on, on here with us this evening and he worked in let's say how many years did you work in NASCAR? Starting with like when you started driving. I guess that would have been Back back in driving was about 1980. By 1980, I ran my first race at Dover. Okay. Yeah, as of driving, I've been in the racing business since about 70, 74, 70, somewhere in there. Okay. Doing, doing building engines. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through your whole story. We're gonna start all from right. the very beginning, like where were you <clears throat> born and raised, and all that kind of good stuff. All right. Uh, but we also want to thank our great RV Life is another one of our sponsors, and that's uh scott mccormick and sheila duncan you know scott mccormick yeah yes he worked with us he works well worked with us down there Ralph Yates. he's mr mr intake manifold guy oh yeah he's yeah. he's a great intake manifold guy but he's doing this business venture with with his girlfriend sheila here in statesville and they rent out rvs so if you're wanting to go to a racetrack or just get away go to the beach go to the mountains whatever you want to do you can get you can rent an rv instead of buying your own and having the hassle of paying for insurance and you know replacing tires and maintaining it and all that all they right. do all that stuff for you you just rent it rent and go yeah what kind of vehicles they got um well they have different types they have the regular rvs and then they have the pull behind trailers oh, okay and so there's there's Classy. i have to keep that in mind mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's a very good deal i think that you can do that because i know that i would certainly do it instead of buying one yeah. <laughs> which I have one, but it, I know the hassle of it too. Yeah. Uh, and mine's way too big. Mine was the one that used to be Robert Yates. It was his, before that it was Mike Hilton, you know, when he was the president of NASCAR. Oh, yeah. It was his and he took it, apparently took it to the tracks. So yeah, it's a big one. Oh yeah. Yes. And, and while you're uh, camping out there on the lake or whatever, you can go get your uh, Jersey Cape yachts. They do custom yachts 
They are located in 2143 River Road in Lower Bank, New Jersey. And you can send Janine an, an email at Janine at JerseyCapeYachts.com. That's with a G. And they also have merchandise and mugs and that kind of stuff. That's where my uh, Yeti come from. So, all right. All right, so let's start back from the very beginning. Where were you, where were you born? Orlando, Florida. All right. So most people that go to Florida aren't from there, but you're here from Florida. So that's <laughs> yeah. always kind of backwards, but hey. Yeah, well, Florida's a haven for people coming in, yeah. you know, tourists and all that. When mm -hmm. I grew up, it, was, it wasn't so much that way yet. When Disney World opened up, it boomed. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, it totally changed Orlando. It's just a, um, it used to be a neat, quiet town to grow up in, perfect yeah. town to grow up in. Now, and it's still a good, neat place to go, some of the areas where we lived in, and, uh, but uh, it's just commercialized, big oh, time. okay. Traffic and a lot of crime now compared to when we grew up. Uh, so uh, it was a good place to grow up when yeah. I, at the right time, too. That reminds me of the song Jimmy Buffett says, they talk about all the mobile homes that they moved down there to smother the keys or whatever, and he says he hates them so much, and they looked a lot better as beer cans. <laughs> oh yeah yep. yes and well scott travison lives down there the beer man of course if he's i don't know if he's tuned in yet but nick ramey was from down there too or he lived down there nick and he lived, also worked for both he lived down at, uh, near sanford florida which is between orlando and daytona mm -hmm. and uh he, he uh, worked at both in orlando and he'd drive back and forth every day back and forth to sanford and uh, Lake Mary, Lake Helen area, what it really was. Okay, Lake Helen. Lake Helen. Is that yeah. where uh, Forrest, Forrest Gallagher? Forrest Gallagher. Callahan. Yeah, his wife just came up yesterday because yeah. she got grandkids that live right up here. Okay. Forrest is back down in Orlando right now. Back, mm -hmm. Well, Lake Helen. He'll be up here shortly. Okay. <clears throat> well, heck, I'm going to have to, next time I go down there to see Beer Man, I might have to swing on in there and grab me some oranges from Forrest. He was always had the good ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so good evening there to uh, Sheila's tuned in. And uh, speaking of great RV life, that's G R and a eight RV life. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram. And Don Clark here in Statesville. And Tracy, you're going to have to say hey to the rest because I took my glasses off. Dickie Dennis is there from, uh, from Virginia. Rachel uh, Rodman. He is from uh, Richmond, Virginia. The infamous fence climber there. Rachel Rodman. Do you remember a fence climber in 2014 at Richmond? He climbed up on the fence and sat up there. Oh yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's legendary at this point. So <laughs> he's paid his dues. <laughs> he can never go back to Richmond ever again. But yeah. but it was worth it, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So go start from the uh, very beginning there, John. Well, I grew up in Orlando, and uh, my dad had race cars. When I was, we were really young, I was like two, three years old, but he had race cars and uh, he didn't drive them. He found out right away he wasn't much of a driver, but he could be a good car owner. So he was, uh, between my uncle who lived right next door to us, uh, they were, they partnered together on them. And the, and the neighbor that lived right across the street from us at that time, it was the driver. And it actually did pretty good. I've got some good pictures of the old cars, you know, with the big bars on the front and, uh, <laughs> Yeah. You know, rebar, or everything all over in the front just to reinforce everything. And uh, he had these little bitty uh, helmet. <laughs> mm. Wasn't we're good for nothing. But uh, they uh, they won a lot of races, apparently. Yeah. I remember as a kid going to the Sunbrock Speedway there in Orlando. And uh, my mom was sitting in the stands with us and watching. It was good. And uh, he, um, um, he, well, he got back from World War II. He, he was interested in a lot of things, and airplanes in particular. My dad would loved airplanes. And in the end, it, it, so how he died mm. in a plane crash. So uh, that was back when I was seven years old, still wow. very young. And uh, so that changed our life right sure. away. Sure. And uh, and uh, and basically, where I would have, if I'd have, if everything had gone like I think he would have wanted it to, we I'd have been racing a long time before. Yeah. <laughs> I got into it, you know. But uh, since that that changed the direction of everything. Because we had a stepfather, and he was had nothing to do with racing. Mm -hmm. We had a conflict over that because, as I was a kid, and I wanted to build model race cars, and he didn't think that was worthy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So whatever. Uh, so we got around it. My brother and I, we would sneak around and get our own stuff, do our own thing, mm -hmm. 
and uh, had built a go kart, but he didn't even know about it. He was totally against any of that stuff. So we uh, we had to work our way through it. So um, yeah, basically, I went uh, a long time there trying to get through school, and uh, Vietnam was going on. So uh, it basically ended up in the Marine Corps. So what year was this? This was in uh, 1969. Okay. I went in in 69 because I was going to get drafted one way or the other. Right. I was trying to go to uh, Florida Tech University there, college, but I, I was trying to work two jobs and, and do that, and it just wasn't happening. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got to keep your grades up a certain level or you're going to get drafted. So okay. finally I just gave in and, and just signed up. So if you signed up, you had uh, some uh, – you could kind of call your shots to where you wanted to go or what you wanted to do, whatever. Oh, okay. It, to a point. Right. Yeah, they, they needed a lot of grunts back then, but I, I was I had uh, automotive experience, and right away I got to the motor pool. Mm. So when they went through that deal, the driving school and the mechanical school, and uh, yeah, there's some background music. <laughs> yeah, and, I know. Right. And uh, so that that was a good education in the Marine Corps, uh, going through the mechanics uh, classes and everything, learning that, and then sent me to Vietnam, and uh, we we were you know, somebody's horn stuck. Yeah, I don't think it's mine. <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah, yeah. there uh, it goes. Yeah, so, so we're in the WAME Randy Marion Studios here, the Clock Tower Building in downtown Statesville, and we got some kind of we got insulation and different things on the wall that absorbs uh, noise, whatever. But it's a brick building. And it's been here since 1896, I believe it is. And so it's been here a while. It's not really, oh, yeah. you know, made for uh, handling noise that well. But, hey, it works good for our band. When we have a band in here, it drowns out the noise. Oh, I bet. But, yeah, yeah. it picks up everything whenever it's just us in here, nice and quiet. That's yeah. why we turn the air off as well. Otherwise, it's going to hear you're going to hear it in the mics. So, mm-hmm. Well, uh, getting back to Vietnam, uh, I got to go over there and uh, – Basically, what we did was with a supply battalion, which meant we ran convoys from Da Nang up to the, the north to the DMZ and back constantly, 24 hours a day, hmm. you know, seven days a week, never, never ending deal. We would pick up, uh, I say, tanks that had been run over landmines, or trucks that run over landmines, or planes that had crashed, or helicopters got shot down. We had to go get, bring all those things back. Okay. So we had to pick them up and bring them back and take them to, they would send them back over to the States to get uh, whatever they could salvage out of it. Mm-hmm. That was the, the, the deal there, you know, going out there. You might be out there with just one guy shotgun and you're loading this thing up, just you and him, yeah. and getting shot at yeah. while you're trying to load this thing up. Oh, you know, I can or whatever. imagine. Gosh, yeah. It was not fun. It wasn't a lot yeah. of fun, but uh, especially when it was raining and the monsoon season and all that, uh, it made it even harder. So uh, that was that was mainly what we did in Vietnam. Wow. How long were you in Vietnam? A whole year. A year? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it seems like 10, doesn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I was, uh, that, they were talking about, oh, we're going to start sending people home early. Well, I didn't meet that cut. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a couple of years after I left uh, that they did that, started doing it. But uh, <clears throat> one of the benefits of having gone to Vietnam was that they had the R&R. And the R&R was like you could go to – different places like japan or korea you could, if you were married you could meet your wife in hawaii um and for certain people uh, you could go to australia yeah well right away uh, when i heard that i'm like well i'm not an officer but um i would certainly like to go to australia so i have a lobby hard to get my first r and r to go to australia and my co made sure i got got to do it and uh, and uh, leading into I'll just to go ahead and tell you this part. I uh, got over there, and uh, on my first R and R in Australia, we got uh, off the plane and got put into the R and R center where we were mixed up with Navy guys, Army guys, Marine Corps, Air Force guys, all there on uh, the R and R, where where you could go and where you couldn't go, and what they do if you got thrown in jail. <laughs> In Australia, or yeah, because you're an R and R, but you had a 50 yeah. mile radius from the R and R center that you could you could go. If you go past that, then you're on your own. Okay. So uh, that was a neat experience. But uh, we we left. We got our indoctrination this one Sunday morning and uh, got civilian clothes. We looked goofy looking clothes because we. <laughs> I mean, it was all that you, you could buy them. Uh, they were terrible. Uh, anyway, but they're better than wearing. You couldn't walk around in your military uniform, so oh, yeah. you had to have civilian type clothes. So uh, we we walked out to R and R Center, just three of us, and uh, didn't know each other. 
but uh, I'm walking along, going down down to Sydney, Australia, the big city. I'd never been in a city that big in my life, hmm. and I was just overwhelmed. You know, Orlando was just a little town compared to the you know this sure. this was like one block compared to that. Yeah. So we're walking along, and we're seeing uh, these these two girls walking up ahead of us, and. Uh, we noticed after a while they were rocking very slow. <laughs> they were dragging their feet. So we caught up to them eventually. And uh, and that's how I met my wife. How about that? Yeah, bang. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the first well, things he and, saw there. And, yeah. So was, one of the first uh, other jack men that I knew was Shane, right? Shane, my son, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And he, he jacked for, uh, I believe it was a Jasper car. A Jasper, back yeah. Back then. Maybe some, maybe Ted Musgrave. Whatever, but he was he was another Jack man. But he he's back in Australia now. No, no, he's oh. he's married and he uh, has got three sons. They were great kids, and he lives down in uh, the northeast or south part of Charlotte. I'm trying to think of a little area. Okay, Tracy but, um, might know that. Mm-hmm. So he's doing real well. I mean, he's still working in the racing business, and uh, his kids are growing up and going to college and all that. So this all okay. All been good for him. He's he's really settled in, and. Uh, you know, doing a good job. Yeah, well, good for him. him. Did he move back at some point, or was he never? Well, he he uh, no, actually, he uh, he went back to Australia to visit his mom before she passed away. Okay. So he, he loaded up the family, the wife, and the three boys, and then went down to Australia and spent some time with her. Uh, but other than that, I don't think he's been back. Okay. So did you have any more kids? The me? Yeah. How many do you have? Total. I have I have a daughter, Simone. That you know of. I mean, no, well, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm well, we won't go there. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, my daughter Simone lives in in uh, down in South Australia, Adelaide. Okay. You've probably heard of Adelaide. It's a big city, beautiful city down there. Really nice place to go to, and uh, she lives down there. That's where she ended up because that's where her mom ended up you know, after we got divorced and all that. So, mm-hmm. and she got re- remarried, but she passed away about five years ago. So my daughter's doing real well, real good, good. and uh, I love to go down there. Um, I'm looking forward to another trip, but with all this COVID going on, I don't know how that's going to work out. Yeah, right. So I'm just kind of keeping a low profile on that, and we're staying in touch. We talk all the time. Yeah. She sends me pictures, and we call. I, I call her. She calls me sometimes if I haven't contacted her in, in the time frame she thinks I should be contacting her. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, I haven't heard from you. You know, yeah. are you okay? We yeah. do that. That's we, cool. Yeah, you know that. the deal. Mm-hmm. So, which is good. That makes me feel good that she, she cares that much. Yeah. So, my grandmother was from Brisbane. And so, when she came over here, she was, I think, pretty sure she was 18 when she moved over here with my grandfather, who was stationed in the Navy in Brisbane during World War II. Yeah. So, when she moved over here and, and my great grandmother, they would mail back and forth, but it took like a month. To oh, get, yeah. you know, to get back and forth. So her mom passed away and she found out about it like a month later. So, um, uh-huh. you know, that kind of stuff. The Brisbane's a nice place. Mm-hmm. Really nice place. If you ever get the opportunity, go to Brisbane. I really want to go. Yeah. yeah I, I, I really encourage you to go. Uh, it's a neat to go to see another country like that. But it's got all the modern amenities and it's a really beautiful place, Australia. Sure. Uh, and there's so much to do and see there. And uh, I'd like to get back there. With all the COVID going on right now, it's kind of tight. Right. Doing things like that, you know, wearing your mask. I don't know what all they do on the airplane, but, you know, but, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a neat place to go to if you yeah. can ever get there. I should have went before that hit, you know, because then there wouldn't be as many restrictions and such. Because yeah. now I think you actually have to have the shot before you can leave the country. But yeah, that's another story anyway. So yeah. Everything's um, subject to change. Yes. And good morning, there or good good morning. I'm so used to saying good morning, you know, every every <laughs> every morning. Uh, yeah. good, good afternoon, there. Linda Jinx is tuned in as well. She's up in uh, Pennsylvania. That's all I'm gonna say. Pennsylvania. <laughs> Cause Pennsylvania. I, yes, because I always think about the airports. Is we she flew close in to there. Pocono? Yes. Okay, so she's Pocono. close to Pocono. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right. So yes, and um, actually, what we're gonna do is take a quick break. And then we'll come back and we'll continue. And if y'all have any questions, put your questions on my uh, YouTube page, D Ham I Am, on our live feed here. And you can put it, put a cue in front of it, a big cue, so that we know it's a question. And Tracy's going to look through those. And we're going to get those as soon as we get back. Uh, but you're listening to John Callis is, our, is joining us here on Racing Roots with Ham. And we'll be right back after these words from our sponsor. 
What you got going, buddy? Or Billy Buck, let me tell you, we've always been known to have the lowest price to sell vehicles, but folks didn't know we buy vehicles from folks right off the street. And right now, I need that extra car, truck, or SUV that's sitting in the driveway that you're not driving. Come bring it. Let me look at it. I will pay you cash on the spot. Get rid of that extra vehicle at Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville or Randy Marion Ford Lincoln. We need your vehicle today. Blue Harbor Bank is not your typical bank, right, Doug Hendricks? It's a great little bank. We're based out of Mooresville. All of our board of directors, our employees, and the vast majority of our customers are all from right here in Iredale County. So it's a great place to be. We have a great time as a team. The team here in Statesville consists of Jennifer Jolly and Tara Summers. They are the primary customer service folks for business and personal banking. Uh, Then we have Tom Kincaid as a commercial banker for this area. We also have the best mortgage banker in the area. That's Lisa Colvard, who many people have worked with at other banks. She's been in the market for over 20 years doing mortgages. And then yours truly, Doug Hendricks, and we have a great time working together. There's no competition between our employees for accounts or whatever. And because of that, then we don't have a lot of the issues that some banks have with people doing things they probably shouldn't do just to make a sale. Blue Harbor Bank with locations in Statesville, Mooresville, and Huntersville. Member FDIC. All right, we're back on Racing Roots with Ham right here on 550 AM and 92.9 FM, and I'm losing my voice. But we've got John Callis in here as a guest this evening. <clears throat> and John worked in NASCAR for many, many, many years, and we're going to get to his uh, some of the teams that he's been with, the championship teams as well. But we're going through his history right now, and he's telling us about his his uh, adventures in Australia. And But I wanted to mention right quick, Linda Jinks, yes, Scranton. See, I always want to say Elmira for some reason – I've Elmira's got, in California, right? No, Elmira is down in West where we go to when we flew to um, Talladega. See, now I'm confused even more. But uh, <laughs> it was Scranton, Pennsylvania. So, yes. Anyway, yeah. well, we flew in to go to Pocono. And yeah. It, yeah, Scranton. And then there's the – that's the one. If I'm not mistaken, we go to the little town where uh, Billy Joel sings about, too. So, you can help me with that, Linda. Allentown? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Just for it. Thanks, John. In my head. I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> I must be getting older. My brain's fried from today, you know. Uh, don't feel bad. <laughs> so, we do have the first question. Dickie yeah, wants yeah. to know John, do you have any family in Virginia? I do. I have uh, my, my stepsister, uh, Linda, and her family. And uh, she's, she's up in the Roanoke area. And, uh, was married to a fellow up there, and he passed away a few years ago. So she's she's doing real well up there, and uh, she's a great girl and uh, got good kids. They're real tight. Good. So they're Virginia, yeah. They're right in the Rolling Neck there, and uh, right by the uh, the river. Mm-hmm. They're right near the river there. So it's neat to go up there and see them. Yeah, Dickie's asking because that's where he lives, in Virginia. Dickie lives in Virginia yeah. as well. He's in Richmond, Virginia area. Oh, Richmond. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of good kids, isn't it so great when you have your kids grow up and they're kind of like self-sufficient? They can go on about <clears throat> and take care of themselves and that type of thing. You know, it's kind of like that's what you try to do as a parent is raise your kids and not be like leaning on you all the time for money and everything else. All right. Just take off. The, the bird flies the nest and go. And, and I mean, of course, you want to still hang out with them and spend time with them, but. You get what I'm saying. You want to you want to start seeing them start get on their own, taking mm-hmm. their own responsibilities and making their own money, and doing their, their own d- uh, tasks. You know, instead yes. of relying on you 100. percent You want to see that happening on its own. Yeah. But instead of having to push them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you got it, man. That's right. Okay, so Bob Patterson's got it right here. Elmira is Watkins Glen. That's uh, what it is. Okay. Okay. Because we when we flew in Talladega, we flew into the airport right beside Talladega, which was uh, they ended up not doing that anymore and then uh scranton wilkes bar i always remember seeing that because yeah. it reminded me of wilkes bar bear burrow sorry uh wilkes bar is in is for pocono scranton and wilkes bar thank mm-hmm. you there bob patterson he used to travel with me he was always on the uh i say always uh he was on the one of our teams at sapco the 42 car the 40 car you know just back and forth uh-huh. so yeah it's been around been around a long time in nascar too but he was a he was a uh a postman but he would fly in on race day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he worked that deal out. It worked out good for a lot of people like that, wanted to be on the racetrack on Sunday. Yeah. They'd come and go. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we had a uh, big John, one of these days I'm going to get him on here. He's up in New York, but he was the, he's a, he is a cook for Tony Stewart's team now, Stewart Haas. Oh. But he was a cook back whenever I was going and he was a, the, uh, catch can. Well, actually the second gas man, mm-hmm. big, big John, big John Yook might remember him. But anyway, all right. So back to your story, John, you were in, in Australia. Yeah. Uh, what happened, uh, once I got married, uh, I might had to migrate to Australia and, uh, that was an endured deal. It had to take a year to get the paperwork done. Uh, cause my, my, my wife wanted to live in Australia and I had my son. So I had to compromise and uh, she went on back to Australia and then I had to, you know, present, uh, had to uh, get the paperwork done to migrate to Australia. Now you can't just go there. A lot of people say, oh, "I think I'll just move to Australia." Well, you don't. You don't just do that. <laughs> yeah, sure. You had a lot of paperwork to be done, yeah. and, it, and it took a year. And uh, so you have to have a job in place before you can, you can enter the country, or you can be approved. So, um, luckily, uh, my father-in-law down in Australia got me a job at a Ford dealer down there in downtown Sydney. So, and I didn't know anything about it, but he said, I got you a job, so you're good to go. That was the final piece of the puzzle that let me get over there. So my kids, my daughter, uh, my son went, and my wife were already back down there. And uh, so I, I made my migration over there and come to find out when I got to the, the uh, job that he had got me, it was a Ford dealership, but they had a race car. Oh, how about that? Yeah, I was like, well, this is cool. Yeah, it's meant, it's meant <laughs> to be right here. Yeah. And nobody yeah. knew, you know, uh, mm-hmm. well, here's this race car. And they asked me if I liked racing. I said, are you kidding? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they invited me to go to, <clears throat> this was around the, the fall, um, so it was almost October. And uh, they said, we're going to Bathurst, you know. And uh, I said, I didn't know what that was. And he said, well, it's, you, you need to come with us. You know, we need to, you love it. So I went, and Bathurst is in the mountains in the uh, inner part of Australia. And uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, little setting out there, a country town. And <clears throat> the racetrack consisted of all the street roads, the big roads they had there. And it was actually going up into a mountain and did a, a lot of a, uh, in and outs. People lived there. Their driveways would be right by. Mm-hmm. Car going right by, you know, and they'd come back down out of the mountain and they call they call it Conrad Strait. They called it that because a connecting rod would usually come out somewhere. Oh my gosh! I mean, before you get down <laughs> to the next turn, That's funny. <clears throat> but they ran um, stock cars. I mean, you, you had to go to a dealership with the uh, cams with Carol uh, Confederate of Australian Motorsports officials, and they would you would buy the car right off the showroom floor hmm. if it had air conditioning. That's the way you raced it. You know, so uh-huh. uh, ideally, after a while, the, the uh, dealerships would clue in on it. They'd get cars that didn't have all that. You know, so that became your, yeah. your race car. So they were brand new cars. Brand new cars, okay. and they, they put a sticker on the windshield, and it was stock. Hmm. Yeah. Except for one thing, they let you take the headliner out in case of fire. Oh, okay. This is what they thought. You know, they would take the headliner out in case there's a fire, you know. Yeah. Okay, everything else can stay. So the seats. <laughs> the, the radio was in there, yeah. you know. And the seats were the stock. Seats, the seats were in there, yeah. Oh, so, wow. okay. And they put uh, roll bars in there. There were aluminum roll bars, you know, and, and they were bolted together, mm. which I like. This is scary, you know. But anyway, mm-hmm. let's go see how fast they ran. Well, they ran pretty hard. Yeah. And uh, so we got to that uh, race in Bathurst, and uh, it, I was pretty impressed with, with the way they did it. It was new, something new to me, but that's how I got my start in the racing, hmm. actually. Yeah. And uh, one thing led to another, so I started building engines and uh, for the team, and uh, that seemed like somehow where there I had a knack for them, and uh, they moved into another building and, and advanced to uh, had a Formula Five Thousand car, which they called it a Formula One car at that time in Australia. Okay. They're actually Formula Five Thousand cars, so we had that car, and a touring car which was a Falcon, Ford Falcon, with a 351 Cleveland, which was a Boss 351 engine, what it was. They would get shipped over from the States, and some of the engines would come from uh, South Africa, from the engine plant there. And so the Boss 351s were the plant for this limited run of cars, Falcon GTs, and they were a really cool-looking car, yeah. beautiful car. I bet. Yeah. 
So um, that 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 went for a good while, and then we uh, eventually uh, the, the driver John Goss moved out and on his own, as he wanted to run the Formula Five Thousand car, the Formula One or whatever we call it, mm-hmm. and uh, so he asked me to go with him and start his little race team of his own. And little did I know I'd be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, constantly, you know, so that led into everything I'm doing today. Wow. How about that? So, yeah. um, and we had a question coming in, Rachel asked a question, but we're going to wait on that here just a little bit, uh, because, um, what did Dickie say? Oh, if you would care if you just have a stock car. He just says it know. would be cool to have stock cars. Yeah. That's okay. All. Yeah, and he mentioned he made a comment before we went to commercial as well. I told him off there. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Mill right here, great family, the Callis family. That's what he said. Yeah. No, well, no, that's okay. Never mind. All right, well, good deal. And so, I think we got a caller calling in right now, and this guy actually went to Australia as well, so he's got a little bit of experience uh, dealing with those Australians. Hey, how you doing this evening? Hey, buddy, I'm doing well. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. How about you? I mean, so uh, so you went to Australia. No, first tell us who this is because we, we, I know, but John doesn't know. Okay, you go ahead and tell him. Okay, it's Nick or Amy. Oh, hey, Nick. You're going to have to have those on to be able to hear him, though. I'm going to have to. Yeah, sorry. Hey. There you go. And is that loud enough? Hey, can John hear me? Uh, Barely, but I can. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Hey, uh, one of the big reasons for me calling <laughs> is I uh, wanted to say a couple things about John. Uh, number one is thanks for his service to his country. Sorry. Thank you. He is Thank a you. Vietnam vet, and he has given us freedom in our country, and uh, uh, we owe him a, a great debt for that. Is this Nick so, or Amy? Just yeah. want to let him know that. Oh, Nick. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's, I thought I recognized hey, that buddy. voice. Yeah, what you doing there? Working on that house? Uh, just checking on you. <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard you were going to be on here and just wanted to call and uh, just uh, thank you for your service for uh, this oh, country. You're, oh, you're welcome. It was uh, an honor to do um, one way or the other. I had to go one way or the other, so uh, um, I was able to pick my my um, branch, the Marine Corps, when I wanted to do that. I always wanted to do that anyway, yep. so um, it worked out good. And uh, I learned a lot. I know. Learned the a thing lot. that, yep. The the thing is, John, you guys didn't get treated very good, and and we have a uh, uh, great debt to pay you, you know, for for what you did, and and it's time to time to give back to you, and we just want to tell you thank you. Well, you're welcome. I t- appreciate it. Yeah, that's I'm a sure, great point. Uh, sure, all all the other guys that got back here appreciate it too. And uh, it was, uh, it was yeah. a, a long long story in that whole saga there, but. Yeah. Uh, we're all alive and we're we're doing well. I missed the guys that didn't get back, but uh, I had a few that yeah. didn't make it back. So, uh, but anyway, we had to move on. We had to keep going on. Sure. Hey, Nick. While I got you on the yeah. phone, let's uh, let's talk about your a uh, little bit of your Australian experience. Uh, I I got to go to Australia a couple times to uh, do a couple engines for some customers I got over there. And, I mean, you know, of course, the whole Australian thing has come about because of John, you know, because of his connections and his friends and, you know, and, and it's made it exciting to want to go over there. And I've uh, uh, got some boat customers over there that race our D3 engines and our FR9 engines. And uh, so I've got to go over there and do some rebuilds and uh, just incredible place. Just uh Love it over there. Would love to go back. I think John said he would like to go back. We're just waiting on this COVID deal to, you know, kind of get over with. Yeah, it's kind of an obstacle right now. Who knows how long that's going to take? Yeah, yes, but, uh, yes. I, I, I might, yeah. I'm itching to go down there to see my grandkids and my daughter. And uh, oh yeah, but just got to sit tight and just keep hoping. Yep. Uh, hey, already. Dave. Yes, sir. Hey. Uh, also, I, I want to say something about John. Uh, if it wasn't for John Callis, uh, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to get here to be in NASCAR. How about that? So you all uh, were together in Florida you know, for a time. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We worked together at Bo Laws, and uh, uh, Bo just passed away uh, uh, 
earlier this year, and uh, so we lost a great guy. But, uh, you know, if it wasn't for John, I'd have never made it, and uh, just want to give him thanks for that. Well, very well, good. You've done well, Nick, I tell you. Um, you know, the way it all worked out, you can ask for a better <laughs> result. You know, you've done well. Josh, yes. Yeah. Well, happy retirement, yeah. Nick. Yeah, we, 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 we know you we, just retired. What's that? We know you just retired, yeah, so happy retirement. To, yeah, I know. I haven't had a chance to see what the retirement is all about yet, but uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll get there pretty soon. With a new house, you've got plenty to do, I'm sure. Yes. So how many years did oh, you yeah. end up there, yeah. Nick, with, with Robert Yates? Or Yates? Uh, you ain't going to believe this, but I finished it at 28 and a half. How about that? That's a long time to be with oh, yeah. one team in NASCAR. Yeah. And, but before that, yep, you were... And, you know, the 28 is, is my number. That's right. The You know, the 28 car. So, you know, I think John and all of us favor that, that 28 car. Oh, yeah. Fred Lorenzen, man. You know, Fred Lorenzen was a 28 car back when I was a kid. <laughs> That's right. And that was my favorite car. It was white yeah. and blue, you know. So the white and blue is why I, I painted my car white and blue. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. I couldn't get the 28 your, number. Your car was beautiful <laughs> And I, I, I still uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to go with you uh, when you ran it over. I yeah, mean, I remember that's that. That's yeah. a huge accomplishment for you, you know? Uh, it was hard work. It was hard, hard, hard work. But, you know, having having you helping me and uh, some other people pitch in here and there, uh, I was able to get a lot done yeah. with very little. Yeah. Not, yeah, not too many people can say that they built the car from the ground up. Yeah. Uh, engine, car, everything, put it all together, went to the racetrack, drove the car, drove it to the track, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the truck and trailer. Yeah. Uh, that's a huge accomplishment. It was a lot of work, but, I, uh, you know, I had had so much fun doing it. I, I'd had to pull over yeah. sometimes on the interstate and take a nap. Mm -hmm. And the car patrol would come over and want to know what I'm doing. You know, the car was exposed so they could see it. Sure. So whenever they saw me, they'd come around and, and crawl across and catch up to me and want to look at the car, oh. nothing else. But one, yeah. one night I was so tired I had to stop, and they said, you can't you can't sleep on the side of the interstate. I said, okay. Well, I said, follow me. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they were, they were good. They, they loved seeing the car. So I, That is awesome, John. That's some good stuff, buddy, and not very many people can say they did that. No, it was the, probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but it was the most satisfying. To, to, you know, I I, yep. I I love building engines, and, and I always have and still do and still enjoy it, but I always wanted to drive the car, and I did always felt yep. that I could never be a really good engine man if I couldn't feel the engine working in the car. And I thought, well, yep. this, this, is, this is only one way to figure this out buy a race car so i did yeah. and i bought a car from will cronkright down in fort mill and this car was uh, originally a bud moore uh actually the car the first first car that dale earnhardt drove on a super speedway it was a uh, torino at the time and humpy wheeler worked a deal with will to put um another driver in the car who didn't show up so will ended up in the car with the car and uh, the whole deal. So he he drew, uh, put Earnhardt in it, and Earnhardt did well in a car. And uh, after that all, he moved on. We'll reskin that car as a Thunderbird, and uh, yep. that's that's how I got the car as a Thunderbird. And it was really uh, um, I wish I could have gotten a lot more time with that car, but it was on its last year. It wasn't legal for the following year, so I figured I'd go to. Oh uh, yeah, I got. Pardon? I said, I got you. That That's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, we, uh, I was going to take it to uh, Daytona in, the, in February and run an ARCA race with it. So um, Will, I mean, uh, yeah, Will told me, he said, you know, you got a couple more races. You could run this car this this year. That was uh, at that, it was about three races left to go. So he said, go to Dover, you know. So I went to Dover with it. And then uh, tried to go to Rockingham. We didn't have have a good luck there with that oil leak, and I couldn't couldn't figure out where it was coming from. We ran out of time there, but uh, went to Atlanta, took the car to Atlanta, and uh, mm -hmm. man, that car was made for Atlanta. And I'd never been to Atlanta in my life. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I got out there and I'm whizzing around there, and I'm like, this is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, and my mom was there, and uh, and I got to thank my family. I remember my brother and my mom and my sisters, uh, they all pitched in. They've done so much for me. But uh, they were there, and uh, we had a brand new set of tires, brand new tires, for the only time I ever had them. And I went out and qualified really well at Atlanta. And uh, at the start of the race, I, I, we still didn't have a pit crew, so I was still relying on other people. To, uh, once they got their pit stop done, I would come in afterwards and get my gas and tires or whatever, whatever my guys could find. And uh, and we ended up breaking a connecting rod in that race and, and uh, got in a big wreck, big mess. But anyway, that was the end of that car, so we took that car home and turned it into a Pontiac. Unfortunately, I'd like to stuck with Ford, uh, but there was uh, Pontiac was really looking for people to to get get more cars on the racetrack, mm-hmm. more Pontiacs. So they gave me everything. Yeah. I mean everything. Yeah. I'm like, well, this is good. Even tires? <laughs> no, 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 tires. no, sheet metal, yeah. engine blocks, <laughs> cylinder heads, he, crankshafts, yeah. you name it, man. We, were, John and I, <clears throat> John and I talked probably an hour the other or last week, a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me about having to have to get good used tires, you know buying these used tires from guys that only had, you know, a little bit of laps on them. Yeah, well, the, the, what we right. do, you had, you had to work a deal before the race started. If some of the big teams, uh, like DK Ulrich, you know, and all them, they would get the takeoffs mm-hmm. off of the top, like Earnhardt car, you know, whatever tires come off, mm-hmm. he would buy those tires to use on his next pit stop. Yeah. So you could do a deal like that, you know. Well, what I would do <laughs> is get the – after he got them from – say the top team and he'd ran them for 20 or 30 laps on his car and he'd take them off i'd get them from there mm-hmm. but it's still better than what i had anyway so that's yeah. how it worked down it charge you they say 15 dollars per tire you know mm-hmm. it'd be on their wheels and that happens all the time back then you sure. can't do that now but back then you can't do a lot of things now that we used to be able to do you know? right right but uh that's how it worked mm-hmm. and um uh, you could get you could get through a race with some good tires, pretty good tires compared to the hard ones. You know, they're hard as a rock. Some of the old tires that people drag around. So that that helped out a lot there. So it's good to, good to know those. John, guys. You, you did some incredible stuff back in, buddy. That was that was pretty awesome. I don't want to stay on here. Uh, I want to let David talk to you. I just want to tell you thank you for being a great friend and and looking out for me and. Uh-huh. Uh, well, you've uh, done well. I appreciate Nick. you very much. You've done well, and you've had a, a really good career up here. And uh, so uh, I'm proud of what you've done with yourself, with your life. You know, you, you've really done yeah. well. I'm impressed and I'm, uh, proud of you. You know, uh, if you know where yeah. I'm coming from. You know, we've known each other yes, a long sir, time. Yes, I do. I sure <laughs> do. Yeah. We come yeah. a long way. You're one of my best friends. You and Dave are, are two of my best friends right there. So I just mm-hmm. couldn't resist the opportunity to call in. Well, man, good to have you here. Yeah, glad you did, Nick. Thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate that. Okay. All right, I'm going to get off here. Y'all have a good time. Uh, uh, God bless you guys. God bless you, you too. too man. Enjoy Talk your to retirement, you. Nick. Yeah, let me know if you need anything, Nick. Thank you very much. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. <laughs> See you Bye-bye. Buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. I'll tell you what, they don't get any better than Nick Ramey. <laughs> yeah, we go way back. Yeah. Yeah, that's I've, a... Yeah. I remember my first day working, walking in the building there. I, mean, I was there 16 years, but going over Nick, but I had known him from traveling with him for years before that, uh-huh. you know, on race the express, oh, which, yeah. which you were on there too. Yeah. But me and Nick just hit it off immediately when I first met him. And I was like, you know, he's a really nice guy. And yeah. I know he knew that I was new into the NASCAR and uh, basically like took me under his wing and just, you know, just a great guy. Seen yeah. that many, so many times when he used to push looter around in his wheelchair at the racetrack i mean that's yeah isn't that i mean gosh take him on the airplane and then push him around at the racetracks a uh, looter i don't know if a lot of people know who james looter is or was and he was a legend and uh he was a, uh, just to work around we had the honor of working with him at robert yates in in his later years but he worked at the home and moody team back in the day in their heyday a tremendous uh, engineer, uh, machinist, a really cool guy. So Nick's, Nick talked about them. I don't know if a lot of people know about Jane Bluter, but that, I just want to mention that. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Thank you. Cause, and uh, I'm, I try to do a Google search on him sometime, whatever, if you're if you're interested. And you'll, you'll definitely see pictures of him. But yeah. like you said, legendary. 
you, you, you could come up with something. You know, you, you run into an obstacle uh, on something, and then you go up to the leader and say, man, what do you think about this? And he'd sit there and tell you exactly how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd probably never seen it before, but he knew how to go from here to there. He can make anything on a lathe or a mill. You know, just amazing old guy. Back before they had CNC machines. Oh, course, yeah. You know, where yeah. you... Yeah. Which you still have to be smart to figure out how to program the machine and do all that, but you put the put the metal in and push the buttons. But you had to you had to do it by your dial calipers and and your dials yeah. on the lathe and the mill. Oh, yeah, I've seen back them. back then. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, he was a good guy. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you were. Uh, so we'll just kind of fast forward it in, which is fine. But um, Rachel had had a question about what was your first NASCAR race you went to? I believe it was. Yeah, I believe that's what it was as well. That that we raced in. Yeah. Well. Um, I actually start with the first one that you ever went to, and then what was the first one you ever raced in? First uh, NASCAR race I ever went to, uh, it was in Daytona, which is only 45 miles from my house and where we grew up. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to go to Daytona, and uh, and basically my mom, my mom loved racing. She was my biggest fan, and really? she loved racing. So she took my brother and I to Daytona 500, 1965, and of course it rained. But um, we we sat in the, in the uh, grandstands. We all the way down in the turn one. You get splinters in your butt if you've moved too for, too quick. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know the the wood was rotted out. Yeah. We've been there for a long time, yeah. but it rained. But Fred Lorenzo won that race, and uh, he was like my hero back in the day. The blue and white car, the yeah. 28, you know, and yeah. all that. So that was good. So that was uh, the first race I ever went to. That car, uh, do you remember when we had it in the uh, in the shop? But it well, not the original car, but the twenty eight, uh-huh. the blue and the white, and the and the Fred Lorenz and all. Anyway, yeah. it, it was uh, <clears throat> what was his name was driving it. Anyway, it was one of our Fords. Yeah, and I got my picture taken with it. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not sure who drove the car, but I remember it. Yeah, I had Travis Quapple, maybe. Travis Quapple, I believe uh-huh. it was, but his uh-huh. name spelled like K V A U P I L or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. somewhere in there. So, so, and right quick, before you say anything else, my dad was, uh, he went to the Charlotte race in 1964. He was a big Junior Johnson fan, but he was there whenever Fireball Roberts got in his yeah. bad wreck at Charlotte. So yeah. anyway, so that was around the same time that you went to your first race, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. It's the same era. Uh, but I was following it before that, trying to listen. We would, my brother and I would listen to the races on the radio religiously every Sunday. We'd get it on the radio and hung up to it you know mm-hmm. uh even sebring we got the sebring race on there one year <laughs> oh wow so uh it was okay. uh we were following up so when my mom finally uh, was able to take us over to daytona and we we were just i was i knew at that moment when they dropped the green flag you know, those cars come off the, the trioval and the turn one i knew what i was going to be doing for my life you know yeah Th- that was it I knew then somehow I was going to get into this business doing mm-hmm. this deal, yeah. and then and then it, it wasn't easy. But uh, you know, we I got I've had a good career, and I'm I'm pleased with the way everything turned out. Yeah, how about that? Stephen Knight was uh, he said he, he used to work with me back at Sabco. He said 351 Cleveland Australia block factory high nickel four bolt main and XXXX in Lifter Valley. Does he have one? Yeah, do you have one of those, Stephen? Let me let us know. I yeah, he, send the phone number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and he said, uh, Luder, James Luder, yeah, great manual machinist. And uh, Phil Cavalli remembers James Luder. He might have taken some pictures of him. Do you remember photo Phil Cavalli? Oh, yeah. 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 From the Winston Cup scene. Oh, yeah. And, and so on. And sometimes he was in civilian clothes later on in the later years. Uh-huh. Still taking pictures, though. He's still doing it. It's good. He's good at it. Yeah, normally he's sitting right over here, but he uh, got eat up with some yellow jackets or something happened to him today, he said. So he's Oh, I don't envy him. Taking it easy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, right? Mm. Me neither. <laughs> All right, so, and I'm not laughing at that, Phil. I was just saying, I don't we envy you, and I'm... <laughs> we feel <laughs> for you. Yeah, we feel for you, for sure, buddy. All right, uh, I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back here on Racing Roots with Ham. We're listening, or we're talking to John Callis, so we'll be right back. This is Dr. Jeff James with Ardell State School Schools, inviting you to join me every Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. here on Whammy Radio. Even though the school isn't in session right now, we still have lots of exciting things to talk about each week going on in our school system, even when students aren't there. 
We'll be talking about improvements being made across the district, changes in the, on the horizon, emerging trends, and how we're equipping our students to succeed in life. So please join me right here on Real Country 550 and 92.9 WAME. Finally, an independent specialty pharmacy in the Lake Norman area. Lakeside Specialty Pharmacy, where they're committed. Back on on my YouTube, so I had to cut the volume on our YouTube channel because that very song right there, that guitar playing, got me a copyright. Uh, not really a strike, but it's just they said you're warning. yeah a warning. So on YouTube, just that just from that guitar hum, strumming. Yeah. So anyway, that's why I got silent for just a a few moments. And the, the deal is, I can go back and edit that out, but then we lose all the comments, questions, comments, and mm. and such if I do any type of editing. So I try not to do that. But also, I want to thank Great RV Life is one of our other sponsors here, and we they are doing the renting RVs here in Statesville and Iredell County. So check them out on Facebook if you want more information on them. That's G R eight the number eight RV Life, and it's Instagram and on Facebook if you're interested in renting an RV. If you want to go to a race or just go get away for the weekend, if you want to use it for a month, whatever you want to do, hmm. um, I think that's the way to go instead of going and buying one and incurring yeah. all that expense oh, yeah. and also while you're uh, jersey cape yachts if you need a custom built yacht they do from like 31 foot to 66 foot if i had phil here he would say jersey cape yachts <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so they do custom yachts and they're out of new jersey but they're uh, check them out on jerseycapeyachts.com and also you can email they have their facebook twitter instagram and youtube and you can email Janine at, that's Janine with a G, at jerseycapeyachts.com. So there you go. All right, back to, back to your story. Yeah. So continue on from where we left off. You got to your first NASCAR race. Now you're going to your, well, go from there. Well, I have to, at that, this point, I need to uh, give a, um, a praise to my brother and his family, his wife, who put me up they i couldn't have done what i did oh, there you go. if it wasn't for him and her and uh, my mom and my, my family the this they kind of pulled in there and uh they, they looked at me like i was crazy sometimes but um I, I like to thank them all and uh for what they've done to help me out so that's that's i mean my my sister come over and she would help clean the tires and the wheels and all that in her spare time so uh, my brother you know he it was his truck that we used to transport the car with i used his shop and i actually stayed in their place and they never charged me a penny and i, I got to thank them uh, wholeheartedly yeah i had a lot of help there that's great and where did they live they at that time we all lived in orlando now they live up in statesville oh. it's right up the road here really yeah okay do they listen to the radio here? i think he is I mean, do they normally listen to the radio station here? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's cool. That's, that's good to know. So if I see a callus, then I'll say, that's probably John's oh, yeah. family. So There's not many of us around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I really don't see the name very often. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, good deal, man. Um, so, and, and whenever you were living with them, that was in Orlando. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. And how, it's, what's the age difference? The age difference? Yeah, between you and your brother. Oh, uh, probably uh, four years, I think, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I forget what year. He, he was born in 46, and I was born in 49. I believe that's right. Okay. So, so he, three years. He was born the same year as my dad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That was 1946, February 2nd. 
1946 or hmm. third. February 3rd. 3rd. <laughs> June 2nd. Yeah, see, I'm getting confused with so, my brother's June 2nd. My dad's February 3rd. Don't feel bad. I feel they do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the older I get, the worse oh, yeah. it gets. <laughs> I know. So there yes. is a question that yeah. came in. Rachel asked, what was the hardest part of learning how to race, John? Well, uh, um, as far as driving the car? Mm, yeah, pretty much. What was the hardest part of learning how to race? Well, the, you have to uh, learn. There's a lot that goes on on a racetrack that people don't see on TV or in the stands, especially on cautions and, and restarts. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hilarious to a point. But, um, th that was uh, something I hadn't experienced, you know, doing just doing engine. Once you get in the race car, it's a different world. I mean, it's just like... Everybody's on his own, you know. Sure. <laughs> you yeah. can see that uh, yesterday on the race uh, up there in New Hampshire. That was a great race. But uh, just um, you have to get the feel of the car and uh, and the use to the power. And uh, when the, like some tracks like po Pocono, mm -hmm. you come off at the, that last turn, you go down the front straightaway, and you're running hard. I mean, you're running 190 mile an hour wow. or more. And then you slam on the brakes and go down and turn one. Yeah. You got to get a feel for that. You can't just barrel down there the first time and hope for everything to come out right. You have to feel your way in there. And most of the time, you got other cars on the track while you're doing that. So you have to just be careful and learn by watching and following. And that you pick it up. If you either got it or you don't, that's the way I see it. You know, uh, just a natural thing for me. I felt comfortable in the car right away. You can't be so. scared. Well, I was having fun. Right, exactly. Yeah. You, you know, it was good. It's a good fun. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, Adrenaline. Oh, yeah. Have you ever thought about it? Like, what would it be like to be Richard Petty, let's say? Oh, yeah. And have the world in your hands as far as you're driving. You got the best cars, yeah. you know, the best of everything, pretty much. Yeah. And to go out there and, you know, end up with 200 wins, not to mention what was won before, whatever before the modern era yeah well I, I, you have to look back on their, that family and when they first started and then how they worked their way up into the business and the woods brothers too you know they yeah. started with very little and they they grew with the sport and uh and the petties uh are, they're iconic i mean they're like the, the god you know to me to a point mm -hmm. that uh for what they've done the family has done and what they have accomplished yeah. but they they started out to, to, with the you know, basic stuff and, and worked their way up and built their own cars and, I mean, did so much. Uh, and other people as well, the Woods Brothers, the same way. Yeah. And, uh, and, they, and they're good friends, by the way. Yeah, that's cool. I found that. Yeah. So, uh, and, um, and still going, too. And, that's the thing about oh, them, yeah, too. Huh? Yeah. I mean, I, I, the Wood Brothers are, are like my, I just can't. I can't say enough about them. Watching them as a kid, yeah. they're so perfected. Mm -hmm. Everything they did was so perfect. Perfect the way they did it. and their cars on the racetrack and how they did stuff and all that. And Leonard Wood was like uh, my uh, idol. Yeah. Because he could do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can make anything. And he and he still does. <laughs> he does. Well, I mean, yeah. With remote control, uh, lawnmower. Oh yeah. And stuff like. I mean, it's just crazy. He's he's great. But he was just watching that team when I was a kid and young, sitting in the stands. I'd, once we went to the 65 day Daytona 500, we were there every race from there on out. Okay. My brother and I, we'd be there. We'd sneak in if we had to. Yeah. I think we did one year. You climbed the fence. Oh, yeah. yeah. You get in there. So <laughs> we walked around the whole infield. It was raining. Yeah. And uh, I remember that well. So but we, we we were there and uh, we couldn't get enough of it. But uh, Leonard Wood always stuck out as being the perfectionist. And a mm -hmm. creator, a creative person, because they always talked about him. You know, I said, "Well, this guy's really sharp," you know. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I just followed him, and and to this day, uh, you know, I try to go up there from time to time and visit with him. But I know he's he's got a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're good people. I mean, really good people. You know, he he would still coming in to Roush Yates, I guess, up until I don't. He may still be going going in, but like five years ago, he was coming in rebuilding carburetors and stuff Leonard oh yeah it's like wow yeah and uh and then we would always have a birthday cake for him when it was his birthday yeah you know and he's still there in his working form just working um just an amazing guy I'd like to get him on the show yes you need to yeah that would sure. be good mm -hmm. there's several people we'd love yeah. to get on oh yeah 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that, the lead, the guys that are that have been around a long time, right? Or the main ones that are that's what this the show's about, you know. Maybe I can help you a little bit on it. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Yeah, and you come in with him too. Getting some of the legends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Waddell well, Wilson, I want to get him in too. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nick's working on that, right, Nick? So yes. You can get the petties in. And uh, and the petties, yes. And and Chris England. You know, because he won't. Oh, yeah, Chris England. <laughs> Chris and my dad. We can get both of them uh, to come at the same time. That would be great, yes. <laughs> yeah. We're always giving him a hard time about, you need to come on the show. And he's like, I don't have any good stories to tell, you know. But, yes, he and does. Then, and then he'll give me a list of other people, and then he'll tell me a story. Yeah. So, there. Uh, uh, what's up there? Paul Rodriguez down in Port St. Lucie, Florida, tuned in. So, he's in Port St. Lucie. Yeah. That's down south. A little bit further mm-hmm. south than you, yeah. Yeah. All right, so then when did you start your driving? I mean, I kind of know we, we talked about that a little bit. I mean, yeah. so we, we actually kind of jumped ahead in that, and that's fine. But what was your first, your okay. very first time? And Well, this is to be interesting here. Yeah. I bought that, that Thunderbird from Will Cronkite, and I took it home, and we painted it the blue and white mm-hmm. and all that, and went to Dover. And the reason I went to Dover, um, I, I f- just fortunate that Frank Warren, had kind of semi-retired. He was a uh, journeyman race car driver in NASCAR for years. You, you know who he is, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. He retired and moved down to Orlando. <clears throat> and he still had a couple of race cars. And uh, he, we, I was working at Bolaws Automotive, you know, building engines there. And he was coming there bringing his stuff to get machine work done. So I got to know Frank. I thought, all right, well, right away, I needed to find out where your shop is at, you know. So I go over there, and I went to a couple of races with him to help him and all. And uh, basically, he... He kind of gu- guided me a bit on um, what to do. Um, he said, you know, I got the car. And he looked the car over and he said, this is a good car, which I could tell that was. And uh, it was a Budmore car. <clears throat> and uh, he says, take it to Dover. I said, Dover? Yeah. He says, yeah. He says, that's a good race for you to go to. You know, you do it. Back then, uh, NASCAR was having a hard time filling up the fields, you know, getting 29 cars or 30 cars. They were, they were sometimes it'd be short. Mm-hmm. And so I could, you could, you could count on getting in the race because of that. You know, you, if you had to make a qualifying run, but typically you're going to be in the race because you know, they didn't have enough cars to fill the field back then. Yeah. And that was, it was part of that for the TV time thing to the yeah. TV money and all that. That was all starting to come about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I could go to Dover and uh, a qualifying run, and, and I'd be in the race. But I would put a good effort in as I could, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with a car. So uh, when I first got to Dover with this car, uh, I'm just taking my time wheeling around there with the tires that were on it when I got it from Will, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably dry rotten a little bit. <laughs> well, uh, no. Yeah, maybe not that we, bad, but... we ran them for a long time during yeah. the race before we took them off. Treadless. Oh, they were, they were, the cord was coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. anyway, it's my, my object on that first race was to learn and to just stay out of the way and and get used to the speed and the, going into the corners with a pack of cars running around you. And and, and you, you feel comfortable after a while. You sure. get to, you, once you feel what's going on and they're all watching you and you're watching them. So it was interesting. Mm-hmm. It was good fun. So I uh, that continued to learn more and more as that went on, and it got I felt more comfortable with it, with running around those guys and running the speeds and going into the corner, driving the car in the corner. That car uh, I took it to Atlanta. I mean, you could drive it into turn one with basically one hand. It was like it didn't have power steering, but it just just hugged the car mm-hmm. on the track there, and uh, uh, it was a great car to run. I wanted to to uh, run a couple of races with. I wish I could have got another year with that car, but it was out of date after that year. Yeah. So I was going to take it to Daytona and run the Arca race, and but we got into that at that Atlanta race, broke a connecting rod, and uh, and the oil went all over the place and ended up back in the car on the wall. So it was going to get reskinned anyway, one way or the other, as a Pontiac. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yes, yeah. That's the one you switched over to the Pontiac. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we basically cut the front snout and the rear clip off of it and put new uh, pieces there, and used the same cage, and then reskinned the car with that. Okay. It turned out pretty good. Yeah. All right. So then, so then, what was the next race? I went to Dover, and then uh, we went to Atlanta, where we had that that big big uh, incident. 
and then uh, we tried to go to Rockingham, but we went. We had an oil leak. For some reason or other, the the remaining seal decided it wanted to leak. So we didn't have anywhere to. We were working in the grass. We were. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any points, so we worked out in the grass there. Yeah. And uh, it was just uh, like we weren't going to get there, so we we packed up and went home. And then I uh, uh, went home, and we we got ready for Atlanta. And after Atlanta, uh, I had to. Uh, to get the car turned into uh, the new spec, the new wheelbase, you know, the Pontiac and all that. That took about a year of time. The time I got the materials and get the car done and to get the engine built and this, that, and the other. So uh, when I finally got the car, the Pontiac done, I went back to Dover with it because I was familiar with that track at the time mm-hmm. by then. And uh, we... Uh, we ran that car, and uh, when I got, I ran the whole 500 miles. Uh, when I got out of that car, I could hardly stand up. I swear, I could hardly stand up. I could oh, hardly sure. get out of the car, yeah. and it whipped me bad. Now I drove that car as a Thunderbird, and it wasn't bad. But this car, this Pontiac, the short wheelbase, it was a handful, mm. and uh, we had to man. It was like driving a Mack truck around there. How about that? And, uh, but we had what we had, so. Uh, uh, I was good, so I, I got used to that. Yeah, I got to, used to where I could I could uh, deal with it, and uh, but my next to this day is uh, paying the price for it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I can remember my neck, my helmet being on this point of my shoulder. I couldn't hold it up in the corner. Sure. But I was still wheeling the car. <laughs> now I do remember being in a car, and, and that's the way it is. Like your head gets really heavy. Oh yeah. And it wants to go to one direction. And it's going to go there whether you want it to or not. That's right. Hey, yeah. hey, caller, is this Rick? Yes, it is. Hey, Rick, this is Ham from Racing Roots with Ham, and I got John Callis on here with me. Do you know John? I do. I know John very well. All right. So John's kind of like, who is this? Yeah, Rick. Rick. Man. This is Rick Man. Rick Man. This is Rick Man. Yeah. What you doing, Rick? Um, that's hanging out in the shop right now. All right. I got a phone call from I got a phone call from Nick Ramey. Said you were going to be on the radio. I'm like, I'll call him. <laughs> <laughs> What's your old man doing? Uh, he's working. Yeah, well, he's not really working. He's he's uh, he's just kind of piddling. You know, his health his health <clears throat> has been up and down, and and um, actually, I took him Thursday to the, to uh, they had to give him a uh, Iron transfusion because the hemoglobin keeps getting slow on him. Uh-huh. So they gave him some iron. I got to go Thursday again and give him the second one, and that 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 kind of keeps him stable for about four months. Uh-huh. So I, so they, I just kind of figured out how to at least how to maintain him. Well, I just want to let you know people know who you are and how we know each other. Is uh, you worked at Bolaws Automotive down in Orlando with the same time Nick and I were there. And that's how we got to know each right. other. And your dad worked there as well. And uh, he was yeah. top, top machinist. And wherever Jim Mann, your dad, wherever Jim Mann went, everybody would go with him. If he got mad and, and went across town to another <laughs> shop, everybody would leave and go with him. <laughs> you know? So uh, he, was, he was a really brilliant engine builder and machinist, Jim, Jim is, and Rick as well. And Rick was the head engine builder for uh, the um, – with the Chevy team out there, uh, Childress. Yes. Yep. Childress for for, yeah. for a long time, and he's, he's kind of semi-retired right. now. Okay. And uh, yep. Yeah, I was gonna uh, when it, later on in the show, I was gonna ask you your tell me your Earnhardt story, but um, but I was gonna ask you if you know uh, Jerry Jerry McGuire. Do you remember that name, yeah. Rick? Yeah. No, I do not. Okay, it might have no. been Jim. But anyway, yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, are you still drag racing? Yep. 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 I, I run that, you know, NHRA Superstock. Um, we probably go to seven, eight races a year. So we have fun with that. Uh, you know, now is you got a, we got a nice motor home and a nice trailer. So when you go to the track, it's kind of uh-huh. like going camping and then sure. hope the drag race breaks out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. if you ever need to rent one, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> that's cool. I guess you know Lanny Barnes out there too, then, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I know Lanny well. Well, to get Lanny on the show too. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'd be a good one. 
Yeah. I, I know Lady yeah. Donna. Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's my wife, Tracy. And uh, like I said, my name's David Ham. I don't know if we've actually ever met face to face, but. I, I don't think so either. I know you work for you work for uh, for Yates for yeah. I, I don't know how long sixteen forever, years. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I worked yeah. with John, and we used to travel together on the Race Day Express back in the day. I guess I started around ninety five was my first year going to the racetrack, huh. and then my last year was two thousand one. Okay. So yeah, I was there when when they were on the championship team in nineteen ninety nine with Dale Jarrett. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I wasn't working there, but I was on the yeah. bus when yeah, oh, yeah, when your guys were doing good. You were with the uh, uh, Sepco car, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Kyle Petty and Sterling Marlin. Uh, yeah. Phillips okay. and Bottas. Yeah. Yeah, I worked for I worked for the for the Petties from '94 to 2000, and then 2000 we I went to work for Richard Childress, and then 2008 we merged with DEI and then became ECR. ECR engines. So, mm -hmm. you know, in our heyday, 2010, 2011, you know, that was probably our busiest time. We were doing 600 engines a year and 22 programs that we leased engines. So we were doing 600, 600 engines a year. So it was, it was wide open. It went from, yeah. you know, having 10 guys in the engine mm. shop to having 130. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just thinking so, about, uh, you know, you – your dad, my brother, uh, all of us migrated from Orlando up here. <laughs> oh, how about that? <laughs> yeah. So, so a little at a time. Yeah. I guess I was the first one, but the Nick, yeah, yeah all come up, you know, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, everybody's done well. Well, this is, yeah. you know, back back at that time, this was the, you know, if you were an engine guy, that's this is where you needed to be, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that was the, you know, you know I was, you know, been very fortunate to get in it at the right time when it was really, you know, NASCAR was really taking off. Right. Was growing, growing, I don't know, I was 30% a year, seemed like, you know, crazy. Yeah, it just went crazy after it. Which it was, was good. It was really fun. It was fun. It was so, fun for sure. Yeah. So, Rick, have you got any good stories about John or about Nick? <laughs> oh, he does. You probably can't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's all good. The statute of limitations is it's yeah. you know we're past that and <laughs> uh, as long as it's PG. I, I will good. say hey, I I don't know if, I don't even know if John knows this or not, but um my dad sent a, a resume to Bo. We lived in Minnesota. Oh yeah, and so my dad sent a resume to Bo because. My mom wanted to move down to Florida because all of her family was down there. And my dad just had his mom and dad were, they lived in Brainerd, Minnesota. And we lived south of Minneapolis. Hmm. So my mom finally talked my dad into moving to Florida. So my dad sent a resume and Bo hired him. Like, I don't even think they had a telephone interview or whatever. He just said, hey, come on down. You're hired. Best movie so ever we made. Packed up, <laughs> we, we packed yeah. up. We had the biggest U-Haul truck you could get, which was like a, I think the whole length of it was like 51 foot. And four kids, my mom and dad, four kids, a dog, and a bird. <laughs> and we, it really we, it took great. three days. It took us three days. It took us three days to get from Minnesota to, to Florida. Uh, I don't and it was when we when we moved down there. It was Labor Day weekend, and it was so hot. I was going to say you big culture shock. Oh yeah, that would have been a, a so rude hot. awakening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go from cold to scalding. Yeah. It was definitely, yeah. definitely, a, definitely a culture shock. But it was, but it, like I said, it was probably the best move we made for sure. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. You guys did well. I mean, wherever your gym man went, everybody go with him. I know that, you know, he, he taught everybody how to do his stuff the right way. He yeah. Was, he's a good guy. Yeah. All of both of you, you're yeah, smart sure. as you, you're really good talent. So that's what the, the guy, when I asked you about uh, my buddy, Jared McGuire, he always talked about gym, gym man. Was. Okay. Yeah. All, just all the time. So the, the man, the man yeah. family, the man name is well known. In the, NASCAR, yeah. in the NASCAR circle, for sure. Yes. All right. 
um, any stories about Nick? All right. Any uh, anything about Nick or Amy? Any good stuff about Nick? You work with him at Petty's too? No. No. <laughs> okay. No, I did not. Okay. I didn't work with him at Petty's. Yeah, you were uh, after just him. at Bose, and um, you know, then of course we we've kept in contact, you know, over the years for sure, and then, you know, I'd always give him a hard time about being a Ford guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was pretty wild back in the day too. This is probably before you met him. He I was. Guess. Yeah. Pretty oh, wild. He had a he had a Chevy two street car. <laughs> I think he built. I think it was a three eighty three stroker or something. I it's forget what it was. Three eighty eight. I think. Probably run. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. That thing would run about a hundred and fifty mile an hour, and the front end on it. You know how a stock Chevy two front end is. Oh yeah, they're terrible. It would go, it would go from one lane to the other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember uh, I could tell some stories about that car and Nick. Uh, probably better not. Is, is that the one he ended up flipping? Or <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, um, and that, well, he stuffed that big engine in that that little car, and they're, they're not the strongest cars in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, they weren't meant for that. Yeah, and it had to, it had the six cylinder. I think it would start with. It still had this. I think this still had the six cylinder rear end in it. Oh, okay. you know? yeah. I think it had like a three hundred eight gear or something. Then it, something it would go. I, I bet it'd go over one hundred fifty. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but don't try to stop it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was it was, it was a scary piece. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I guess yeah. The best thing that ever happened to Nick was Lynn. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, nothing for sure. personal, but yes, that, that is a good woman, and he's he's got a good <laughs> life, wife. I tell you, yeah. and he's yeah. he's she's really got him under the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, I'm just joking. Yeah. But she yeah. takes good care of him, and I'm sure he takes care of her. They they've got a good relationship, and they're doing well. Yeah. And she's, I yeah. mean, they're the best for each other. I know they've known each other a lot longer than they've known me, but um, it just took them a while to get together. But uh, she's, they're yeah. perfect. They're perfect. Yeah. Good deal. All right. So re- where are you living now? All right. Now? Well, I'm going to get off here and let you guys go. Okay. Well, hey, r- one quick question. Where do you live now? Where? What town are you living in? I live I live um, off right off the of 85 in Trinity, North Carolina, which is oh. right at Tom, between Thomasville and Greensboro. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used, yeah. I got so you. My, my, my house. My property actually backs up to the farm that Kyle owned forever. Oh yeah, okay. Um, it's a community called Safe Steeple Gate, and the the guy that owned this property, uh, his name was Gary Laughlin. He owned 160 acres, and Kyle owned 160 acres, and they, or I think Kyle might have owned the whole thing at one time. Mm-hmm. And he sold Gary 160, and Gary developed this this uh, subdivision. But my backyard actually backs up to his, so nobody, I'll never, that's one of the reasons I chose this lot was to, um, so I knew nobody would ever build behind us. But now, the people that own the cookout restaurant, they own it, and they're keeping it a farm, and it's it's a pretty cool little place. Oh, good. Hmm. Is that the one, is that Finch Farm Road <clears throat> by tents? Yeah, Finch okay. Farm Road. Okay, all right. Yep. Yeah, that's a nice place out there. Oh, nice yeah. piece. Yeah. Nice subdivision. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rick, for calling. All right. Y'all have fun. All sure. right, man. Talk good, to you. good hearing from you. You too. We'll talk to you. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. Very good. Rick Mann from the legendary Mann family. That's Mann with two ends. Yeah. 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 Good family. Good Good people. Yeah. Well, good deal. So, um, So whenever you... Let's see if we have any more questions. We had uh, Jim Dooley's up in Virginia. Tune in. He said this show is uh, this show is really where the rubber meets the road. That's right, behind the scenes. Yeah, we're hearing a lot of good behind the scenes stories here with John. If you're just tuned in, we got John Callis, who's a longtime NASCAR worked in NASCAR and drove in NASCAR as well. And Steve Knight makes the point that 500 laps at Dover is the toughest. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh yes, I can imagine driving it. Uh-huh. It was tough being there. Pocono was nice. Uh, you get to go to Dover and you go to Pocono. Oh, this is good. Yeah. You know, straightaways. Dover is a, a challenge, but it was it's a neat track to really uh, feel the engine working. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to feel the engine. That's the hell what, what led me into driving, actually getting a car. I wanted to drive, but I actually went ahead and got it. 
but uh, you have to to be a I felt like to be a good engine builder, I needed to feel the engine working. Sure. You know, yeah. uh, and that all the power curve and everything. So I started working in my little shop in Orlando on cylinder heads and uh, come up with a, a pretty good uh, intake port, I felt. And uh, actually, that's what we, uh, inquir- Dr. Nate brought it into Roush Yates when I first started doing the head deal. Mm-hmm. Yep. But um, I didn't know much about cylinder heads then, but I learned from Bo actually back then and uh, come up with a nice package. And uh, you could feel that. I, I wanted to be able to come uh, uh, off a corner like at Pocono, coming off the last turn and going all the way down the straightaway and with a tall gear. Yeah, there you go. You know, mm-hmm. and perhaps feel the car pull. And I'd go to, um, when Charlotte Speedway, they used to have a deal where uh, for a whole day or a couple of days, you could just come in there and run laps, mm-hmm. no charge. You know, you remember yeah. that? Mm-mm, I uh, don't remember. Oh that. yeah, I'd go, I'd do that. I'd take advantage of that. I go out there and run laps all day long, man, mm-hmm. trying stuff. Move yeah. the can, my bass would move it back to this, or that. You know, yeah. Just little things with the engine, mm-hmm. and uh, I learned a lot. So just, basically, when you say you're, you're relying on the not well, when you say tall gear, you're not relying on the gear to make the engine to have more uh, power you're, you're basically the if the engine can pull you down straight away exactly. with that tall gear yeah. it's strong right yeah that's, that's that was the whole idea pulling yeah. it off and i got to know the uh the one nascar official they, you know they had a guy that was stand there with a radar gun because mm-hmm. people were using nitrous back in the day and they could tell when that thing started accelerating all of a sudden right but he would also you know wanted to keep track of everybody's trap speed going into turn one what your top speed you mm-hmm. know and he came over to me one day at Pocono, and I, I was back there working on the car. He said, I want you to know you've got the fastest trap speed of everybody here. Mm-hmm. I said, and I didn't even know he was doing this. Yeah. You know, and uh, he came over to me that, and I said, well, how fast did I go? He says, well, I got you at 193 mile an hour. Wow. <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I said, like, if That's I'd awesome. have known that, I'd have done something different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, sure. I didn't realize that, but... Yeah. Just getting the car to pull off of that last corner and accelerate all the way down that front straightaway, yeah, just to feel it. Mm-hmm. And, he, and so I got to know him pretty good, and he would give me my speech. Good. He could tell me what I, where I was picking it up, and uh, we got to be buddies, you know? Yes. So I was learning mm-hmm. all, all kinds of stuff there. Yeah. Sure. Really good. You should give him a radio and say, call. call oh, what? <laughs> radio? <laughs> right before the radio. Walkie talkie. We didn't have a radio. <laughs> <laughs> we had a pit board. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That was about it. Hey, so we had a couple of questions. And are you going to ask them? Or you... you can go well, ahead. Well, all right. So, one, this, we'll lead. Did you ever race on dirt with one from Rachel? We, uh, not uh, prior to uh, that, all of that. Yeah. But we did do a deal um, when I worked at Lumax. Uh, David Evans and uh, some other guys that had a one of our our guys who was uh, ran dirt up in the mountains here, mm-hmm. and he he came to work from the shop there. So he put together a deal where we well, went up the mountains and ran these dirt cars, drove cars that other uh, some of the guys over there regular drivers, you know. Yeah. And uh, they were little bitty cars. <laughs> like, oh. I could hardly get in this thing. I'm sitting there, <laughs> my knees were jammed up to the steering wheel. Sure. But that, that's the only time I try to run dirt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wasn't uh, Bill, Billy Wilburn? That might have been before his time, but I don't know if he was with y'all when y'all won the championship in '89. Bill Wilburn. Uh, with Rusty. Yeah. I don't know if he was. Yeah. I don't think he was. Who was he? Being a chassis shop. It, it was um, the John Dodson, <laughs> Barry Dodson, Brad Dodson. Red Dog. Red Dog. Yeah. Brad, Brad Todd Perry. Brad Thrower. Yeah. And uh, who else? Um, who else was with you? I was going to say another one, but then it just escaped me mm. right then. I could almost name them all. Oh, but. Uh, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy Makar. Yep, Jimmy Makar. Yeah. He was like the head guy. He was, a, he was a, well, he was a chassis guy. Mm-hmm. He did all the set- setups and stuff like that. He was sharp on it. Yeah. Good guy. That's interesting. I worked with a lot of those guys. And then David Evans, of course. I don't know if Ronnie Phillips was there, but uh, he was a little bit younger, so he may not have been. I don't know when he came in the deal. But it's uh, kind of like later on, <clears throat> Sabco, you know, Felix Sabatis, and he started pulling some of those guys in into the team uh, throughout the years, of course. You know, the Dodsons worked over at Sabco, mm-hmm. you know, all three of them when I started there. And then and then later on, David Evans come in, 97, 96, the 96 season, I guess it was. Uh-huh. 
No, it was, yeah, it was Somewhere Kyle. There. Yeah, with Kyle at that point. Yeah. yeah, so anyway, um, and, oh, and then this leads me to Dickie's question. He said, uh, and this is one of the stories I want you to tell. He said, what is the most, your most hilarious story you can share uh, from your NASCAR career? Oh, uh, I got a good one. Yeah. <laughs> He's got okay. a good one. Okay, yeah. uh, um, we were at, we were at Pocono, and uh, here's how I did, or did my deal. Um, the, the, I never would pit when the leaders, when there's a caution came out, all the leaders would go in, bang, 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 and I would stay out because I didn't want to interfere with them, but I wanted to try to get those tires, takeoffs. So I'd go around and do another lap and come back around and uh, pull into my pit, and I then helped to the, the, the under deal to get some tires, you know. Yeah. If not, we just got gas, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I tried not to get in, in in the middle of the, the, the fast cars, the big guys, you know, and all. So uh, this particular um, at Pocono and uh, caution, and we're under, uh, we're just doing to speed, just caution speed. And we come off the tunnel, turn, tunnel turn, there, and turn there as you would go into the pit road. And uh, and Earnhardt and all the guys, uh, the big cars were already come back out and lined up. And somehow or another, I ended up in the inside lane right behind Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt. Mm-hmm. And in front of him was Bobby Allison. And I'm, I'm like, I don't know how did I get here? You know, I'm like, what am I, how am I going to do this here? Uh, <laughs> you know, I need to get somewhere else, get out of the way. Yeah. So anyway, while we're, I'm con- concentrating on that, I looked in. I looked. I could see all the way through the, the cars. I could see Bobby Allison and his car, you know, and they're hurt in front of me. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I saw this. Back, remember the the Gatorade cups? Yeah. Little cups. Back in the day, you know, that's what you'd got when you come in for a pit stop to get. To, we go. Bobby Allison had this. Uh, I saw this. Uh, uh, this pit cup come flying out of Bobby Allison, Bobby Allison's car. The window net and everything. He, he had a cup of water. He f- reached out that little gap there and flipped it out, and it landed square in Dell Earnhardt's windshield. Oh! And, and and it just splattered everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and, and he gave in the uh, the five finger, the big finger, you know, like he was mad as he could be. I'm man. sure Earnhardt was mad about that. Uh, oh sure. yeah, he was hot. <laughs> so uh, that, that was uh, that was one of the neatest things I ever saw. I'm sure. Gosh, <laughs> yes. So yeah. I mean, because there's not much of a wind. It's not like you can. Put your whole arm out, yeah. really. I mean, you just tighten the wind in it, and I, he just flicked it over, and it landed right I don't on her. How he did it? Because you got an opening like a here, and an opening back here. Yeah. And but he just flipped it out, and it, and it had the water in it and everything still, and it hit the windshield <laughs> perfect. Where, where he must he have went. practiced that before some, <laughs> some other place. It was it was Man. funny. I, I couldn't help but laugh. Yeah, sure. Uh, I might have to ask him about that because we yeah. we uh, when Donnie was on here, he said he's going to bring Bobby back, so we'll see. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah, get them both. He said, "I want to bring my brother in here and have them on here at the same time." Good. Yeah, that would be that would be great. And then I want to tell. Um, so Dale Jr. was listening to one of my shows because he sent me a message on Twitter, and then I didn't get it till a month, a month later. later. Oh, I guess that's the way yeah. I get it. And I'm like, hey, yeah. God, this, why is this? But I've turned on <laughs> notifications now because I had them turned off. Or whatever. I was like, all right, I got to try to focus down on one of my platforms and finally and now i'm just like you know what forget it i'm going on all of them uh but yeah maybe i'll have, ask him if he's ever heard that story because that's a pretty funny story there oh yeah and i wonder how long Earnhardt was mad about that like oh he know. was hot yes <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah he was he was cool. i mean he was hot yeah dicky says awesome yeah and that's what's up mike bears tuned in as well and the troutman family he said i saw him connect uh, comment on facebook earlier Oh, I didn't see it on YouTube, so. No, I didn't see it on there, but um, I just want to tell everybody, if y'all want to be, because everybody that's watching right now, if you go onto Facebook and go to my Racing Roots with Ham group, there's a, it's a private group that you can join, and that way I kind of like put behind the scenes kind of pictures, like I put some, I put the ones that you sent me, they're really cool older pictures, I put mm-hmm. those on the, on the private group page, so, and then, and then y'all also will know every time. We're going to go live and all that kind of good stuff. So, And you can request to join the group. Yeah. Racing Roots, R-O-U-T-E-S, with HAM, H-A-M-M. That's right. Request that, to be yeah. in the group. Yeah. I just got a couple of simple questions asked. They're really simple. And just ask, answer them and, and then you're done. So do we want to spin a wheel and pick a prize? Um, 
I think we'll pass this week. Okay, we're going to pass this week. But if you want to, also go on to my webs- website, dhamim.com, and hit the button that says subscribe. Put your email address in there, and then we will um, we'll also, as soon as I start doing emails, I'm not going to wear you out with emails, but I'll also uh, do, put some pretty cool stuff on there because I love the history. I love the NASCAR history, racing history in general. Mm-hmm. So when I start writing articles, they're, they're what you call blog is when you put them on your website. You just put articles and pictures. And as I go through and I learn everybody's stories, I want to start writing them down and putting them in the blog posts. Yeah. So that'll be on the website. That'd be cool. Yeah. A good reference, you know, for the future generations. Oh, yeah. Because uh, we're not getting any younger. And, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But we want people to remember this, this era of, of racing. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's evolved. It's changed. Um, the pioneers, so to say. Yeah, the pioneers, the ones mm-hmm. that, that oh, paved I, our way the past. The, oh, I don't feel that old. <laughs> <laughs> Not referencing well, you, well, just saying <laughs> in general. Yeah, but you're you're definitely one of the the pioneers. I mean, you know, and, and you know, so you you've and you come up from Florida and 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 just kind of paved the way for other guys to come up and yeah. come from other places and whatever. But yeah, pioneer. Um, anybody that's been in it thirty years or more. Yeah, there you go. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Suzette uh, McGuire. This racing's changed. Oh, yes, yeah, changed a lot. She's uh, listening from out in California. Great show, guys. Always do good. And thank you. Have a, a great week, my friends. Yes, you too, Suzette. She tunes into the radio as well. And yeah, and also wanted to uh, thank uh, Great RV Life once again. That's G R 8 RV Life. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram. And that's Sheila Duncan and Scott McCormick, who is one of our friends from. Roush Yates. Oh, yeah. All right. So, and you want to say hey to, to the guys at Roush Yates that are probably going to be listening tomorrow at least. So, yeah. uh, I'm sure Chris will have it cranked up. And <laughs> Yeah, I miss all those guys. Yeah, I need to get down there, maybe come through there and mm-hmm. stir up some stuff. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> maybe we could just. They might not let me in. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Maybe we should go down there together. You know, I'll take my yeah. harmonica. Well, I'll. I'll do the happy birthday song. Oh, Lord. Which is kind of funny because I still do it every morning here on the radio. Yeah. I'll do happy birthday with the harmonica. Yeah. And I used to do it what, once a month month over there at Roush Yates. So, anyway. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Doug said he misses kept your going. harmonica. That's right, yes. So, kind of kept it going here. But, yes, thank you for your service as well. And uh, that's what. Hey, you're welcome. And Rachel Robin yeah. just said, remind us of that also. All right, any more parting words? If somebody wants to get in touch with you or make a comment or ask you a question, just go right here on my YouTube channel. <laughs> as soon as the video ends, you can go back and you can rewatch it. Um, also, hit the thumbs up on it, but you can ask a question, and I'll make sure that John sees it. Yeah. And, and or his brother, ask his brother a question, you know. So, and he'll be, he's on here probably watching right now, but he may not have a login. He may not be logged in where he can comment. Uh-huh. that's kind of what happens a lot of times you have to actually log in to be able to comment well he could give you some pretty good stories i think uh, the yeah. whole deal <laughs> i'm sure yes yeah we might get him to call in next time <clears throat> yeah we could definitely set that up next time you come in we'll, we'll do the call in and so i also want to thank jersey cape yachts they are the largest yacht brokerage association they have a complete line of yachts all their uh custom yachts from 30 i think it's 31 to 66 foot but that's check them out jerseycapeyachts.com and they're on instagram twitter facebook and youtube and linkedin so dick and dennis thanks to you too sir and jim dooley and tracy and rachel and most importantly john callis thanks so much for coming and joining us well, I appreciate you t- bringing me in. Yeah. yeah. And right now you're doing, is it Callus Restorations? Engines? Yeah, that's, uh, I started a little company called Callus Restorations, and uh, I do basically, uh, I've restored several uh, Mustangs, Boss 302s and Shelbys, and uh, I've, um, basically you can't do that anymore because my neighborhood grew up. But I'm doing the engines, uh, you know, Concourse Correct engines, uh, 289 Hypos, 427 side oilers, um, you know, to do as I'm doing some uh, engines right now. Basically, they're just display engines. They're they're not running engines, but they look the piece. I'm, I really enjoy doing that, finding all the parts, mm-hmm. making them look authentic, and building them in the stands to pose them on. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Very good. Uh, good Got to stay busy doing yeah. something. Yeah, for sure. And why not do something that you know, right? Yeah. Do's, that you know very well, I should say. Been doing it a long time. And Chad Hatter was tuned in as well. He's up in Ohio. 
and he is uh, he'll be racing tomorrow evening, I guess, in his I racing. It's the last race of the season, he said. Yeah, the last race. Okay, so go on there and check him out. It's a Canadian e racing mm -hmm. network, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's on Facebook. So he does the he sits there, and does a computer, or it's a PlayStation Four. So yeah, yeah, yep. And uh, so check out uh, Susan uh, Sheila. I'm sorry, just put her uh, thing on here. It says uh, where did it go? Anyway. All right, so great RV life. That was what she put on there. All right, so y'all have a great evening, and we'll see you. Oh, there it is. You're welcome, Rachel, from Great RV Life. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning for the Billy Buck Morning Show, so tune in for that. I'll be here with a side of ham and uh, from 6 to 10 a.m. And then next week, I uh, don't have a guest yet. So, John, you got any ideas for next week? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'll, I'll work on that. Yeah, I sent a couple texts today. So if anybody – I sent a text to John Hunter Nemechek and to Jordan Anderson – I probably should just call them because you never know where they're at if they get the text or don't get it. Um, so I figured I would just give it a shot, but I haven't heard back from them yet. So if you know them, just go ahead and tell them about the show. Uh, they may have heard, may have not. I don't know. So Yeah, I, I got somebody in mind. I'll, I'll mention it later. There you go. But uh, I'll see if I can do, do that and get him up here. Okay, good deal. But yeah, either way, we'll have somebody next week. So y'all tune in next Monday evening for Racing Groups with Ham at 7 o'clock. And uh, thanks again, John. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're welcome. We'll talk to you. Enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah man, me too. Yeah. We did too. Had to dig deep in my own brain here to, to remember yeah. some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And when you get when we, when you leave, you'll be like, oh, I could have told this and that. And that oh, yeah. Always happens. Yeah, well, there's a lot yeah. of stories you could tell, but you're oh, trying yeah. to, to, to just drive Central. the situation. It's kind of hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know how it is at the racetrack. But yeah. uh, I, I don't I regret anything that I've done there. I, I mean, I, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. I learned so much from it. It's helped me now. Sure. Helped yeah. me through on. But, uh, yeah, just being able to, to drive the car was a thrill to me. Mm -hmm. And we didn't win any races. We didn't win any poles or anything like that. But we had a good time. Yeah. Yeah, you that's great. You did what you loved, and yeah. that's what counts. Well, yeah. and next time when you come back, we'll have to go through some of your stuff. We can just start right up with the with your, you know, the championship with Rusty Wallace and then go from there all the way oh, through yeah. the Robert Yates racing years. And those those kinds of things. Yeah, Y'all won a lot of races with Robert Yates, and yeah. this, Robert Yates is known for his cylinder head. So you were right there in the thick of it. Well, I, I didn't intend to do cylinder heads when I went to work for Robert. Mm, yeah, that's <laughs> to be honest with that. you. Yeah, um, I was uh, hired to do a Bush program back then the day for Dale Jarrett's uh, Bush car and Mike uh, Wallace's uh, Bush car, mm -hmm. and uh, one thing led to another. Uh, so when the Bush program went away after the first year, uh, Doug wanted me to build uh, qualifying engines. So they were doing, they were trying to do cylinder heads on their CNC machine back in the back there. And, and I, I looked at it and I'm like, this is not, not working. This yeah. is not going to work, you know? So, um, Doug said, uh, I, went, I asked Doug, I said, what am I going to do for heads? He says, you're going to have to grind them. <laughs> so, uh, take the castings and go back there and grind some heads. Well, that's not what I came here to work for, mm. to, to do, you know. Mm. So anyway, so I had to grind. The first engine I did, I had to grind the heads f from scratch, mm. you know, which wore me out. I had to bring my own grinders in and all that and do that deal. Mm. So they ran the uh, engine on the um, dyno, and I was still in there working on on the next engine. And uh, Doug called me into his office, you know. I didn't know what was going on. He says, uh, you know, we would like you to do... Uh, to take over the cylinder head deal. I was like, I didn't come here to do cylinder heads, you know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it, I ended up taking it over because they did have the CNC machinery. So all the, the biggest thing was to get somebody in there that could write the programs to do cylinder heads on that machine. They had a really good machine. And uh, so <clears throat> they, um, we got that part going on. Well, once that happened, and then the, the, they could be consistent on the ports and i just had to detail them and blend the flow them mm. and all that stuff you know so it worked out good yeah. yeah but uh but uh yeah it was it was something i, I had a new challenge with the cnc machinery that was uh, that's the way to go <laughs> oh yeah for sure <laughs> all Definitely. i had to do was make a model yeah you know that's all right <clears throat> um all right so yeah thanks again and uh dicky or i'm sorry jim dooley says thanks john i really enjoyed the show tonight you're a special guy good luck well, thank you. Yeah, thank y'all. All right, well, thank y'all so much for tuning in, and we'll see y'all next Monday evening. Have a great night.
Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest from the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Real Country 550 and 92.9 WAME Statesville. This is William Morgan with Capital Management Group. Think of all the fads you've seen over the years. If they were meant to last, you'd still be wearing plastic.